da 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 If you would like to leave a question for me to answer in an upcoming episode, then feel free. This gives me more content to discuss as well as making the community bigger. Ah, Pokemon. My favourite franchise. You've always been there for me in times of need. Yes, as you all know, I'm a Pokemon addict. I've been a fan of it since its early days, and I still love it to this day. But believe it or not, there was actually a brief moment where I considered moving on from my love of it. It was during secondary school. I was in my IT class and the teacher was helping other students with their work. I often found myself with nothing to do in that class and I usually ended up browsing the internet on the computer. Back then I would look at Serebi for Pokemon info, and on this particular day, they had recently revealed all of the new Pokemon that would be debuting in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. My instinct back then was to scroll to the bottom of the list of new Pokemon and see what the new cool legendaries would look like. So I did just that, and it was then that I saw Palkia. Now having been a fan for a long time, I think Palkia is a cool Pokemon, and I don't have anything against it. But my initial impression of it on that day was that it looked kinda like a robot. It had this Transformer wrist gun arm design going for it, and I thought, oh if Pokemon are all turning into robots and stuff, then maybe it's becoming a bit too Digimon-y for me. Now two things to note. One, it's funny how ironic this is, because spoilers for Pokemon Violet, it has a lot of robotic Pokemon designs, and I find them really cool. Two, Digimon. I had a bias for Pokemon as a kid, even though I'd seen a couple of episodes from the Digimon anime, and I remembered them fondly. In recent years, I bought the Digimon anime box sets and have seen a lot more of it now, so I would highly recommend checking it out, as it is very good. I'd say more about it, but we're talking Pokemon. Palkia. It actually holds the label for almost putting me off of Pokemon, and its counterpart Dialga wasn't doing a lot to help with what I originally thought was an almost robotic design. Scrolling back up the list of new Pokemon, however, I saw Pokemon like Bidoof, Starly, Shinx, Weasel, and thought, okay, it's not all going to be robots and stuff, but there is still an animal focus. These were all initial impressions that lasted about five minutes. And I did eventually get Pokemon Diamond, and loved it, as well as the rest of Gen 4. It is hilarious looking back though and thinking, Bidoof, god that it is, may have saved my Pokemon interest. I'm not a big fan of Bidoof, but respect. Now it's interesting to think about when some people began phasing out of their Pokemon interests. I've heard a few different stories from people over the years. From what I've gathered, most people loved Kanto and Johto. I've never met a person who got to the Johto games and thought, nah, this is too different from the first ones, I'm out but I'm sure they must exist out there somewhere. I've heard that Gen 3 was the beginning of the end for a few people. This tropical region with many new Pokemon designs, but also lacking in old Pokemon availability, rubbed some people the wrong way. My parents got me Sapphire for my birthday and I loved it. Side note, Ruby and Sapphire were released in Europe in July 2003 apparently, so presumably I got it for my 12th birthday in 2004, which lines up with me being in secondary school when I played it. I have distinct memories of seeing Pokemon like Wurmple and Lunatone for the first time, and thinking how cool they looked. Yes, not many Pokemon from Gens 1 and 2 returned in this game, but it was fun, and I loved the new ones. Again though, Gen 3 came out around the time of secondary school, and for many, this was a growing out of kids games phase. Heck, for many, it was a growing out of Pokemon phase. As for Gen 4, I don't know if many people were put off by it, as I've heard it was well received. I'm sure there were some though. Funnily enough, before I got Pokemon Diamond, I actually got the Wii game Pokemon Battle Revolution. For many of the Gen 4 Pokemon, Battle Revolution's campaign was my introduction to some of them. Bronzor, Carnivine, and Wormadam spring to mind. Wait a minute. I just looked it up and Diamond came out in July 2007, but Revolution came out in December 2007. But I'm sure I got Diamond when it was first released. The mystery deepens. Guess I got Diamond first then. Much like Gen 3, I fell in love with the new Gen 4 pokes. Now the generation I've heard is the biggest culprit of causing the fans to move on from the franchise seems to be Generation 5. Black and White made the bold choice of having the only accessible Pokemon in the game being new Pokemon. For many thinking that their old favourites would be left in the past, this was an off-putter. 
For my friend James, however, who seems to be phasing out of Pokemon during that time, it actually reinvigorated his interests again, and he, like me, found new favourites like the awesome Hydreigon and Samurott. I'm more of a superior fan myself. It needs to be said though, one of the biggest complaints I've heard people say, and still hear to this day, is that Trabish's design meant that Pokemon were running out of design ideas. For the record, I'm on the side of people who like Trabish, and I see people's point about the old designs in Gen 1. I still love them, of course. But Gen 5 is the one I've heard the most complaints about. Now, Black and White did allow the transfer of Pokemon from older games once the Elite Four had been defeated, and Black and White 2 has a much more diverse list of Pokemon to encounter. But for many, Black and White seems to be the final nail in the coffin. Now, back to me, that time with the Gen 4 Pokemon list was the closest I've come to moving on from Pokemon. And again, it was like, what, a 15 second moment? But Pokemon is sat in an interesting position for me these days. I've wondered if I'll be getting the DLC for Scarlet and Violet, and only recently decided that I'd like to grab that, so that I can experience it. For Sword and Shield, there was no question. I was getting that DLC. For a while though, Pokemon has decided that there isn't going to be a national dex, aka access to all of the Pokemon. Yes, things are getting better on that front, but right now, all of my best trained Pokemon throughout the years remain on Pokemon Moon on the 3DS. I want to keep them together and transfer some of my favourites, rather than training up new versions of certain species. If I could just release one more game that lets me finally move all of them to the Switch, that would be really cool. But sadly, this hasn't happened yet. Then of course, from an anime standpoint, Ash's journey has just ended. I've heard that the new anime is good, however, and of course, I fully intend to check it out. New Pokemon animation is new Pokemon animation, after all. But some will consider Ash's journey ending a stopping point for their own Pokemon journeys, at least with future stuff. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I will always love Pokemon. Funny story, you remember... M? Well, when we were friends in secondary school, I made a pact with them to always love Pokemon to the end of our days. For a few years, I made sure to stick with that pact. And you know what? After all this time, I bet M has completely forgotten we ever made that pact. Maybe they've even forgotten about me. At this point, I guess I made a pact with myself. And you know what? I'm glad I stayed true to it. Without it, well, I would have missed out on a lot of memories that I still cherish. Also, Dudley's Pokenoha wouldn't have existed. So again, I'm glad I stuck with it. Well anyway, just thought I'd share the funny story of how Palkia is evil! Welcome to the Giving Back to You segment, let's jump right into the questions. Question 1. What type of Pokemon is Palkia? What type of Pokemon is Palkia? Question 2. When a Pokemon loses all of its PP, also known as power points, what move does it begin using? When a Pokemon loses all of its PP, also known as power points, what move does it begin using? Question 3. In Generation 1, how many Pokemon are Ghost type? In Generation 1, how many Pokemon are Ghost type? Question 4. Name this Pokemon. Name this Pokemon. Question 5. True or false? There is a lighthouse in Sinwood City. True or false? There is a lighthouse in Sinwood City. Question 6. What type of Pokemon does the gym leader Price specialise in? What type of Pokemon does the gym leader Price specialise in? Question 7. What colour earrings are typically worn by the character Jesse in the anime? What colour earrings are typically worn by the character Jesse in the anime? Question 8. In the Gen 3 Safari Zone, what would be placed on feeders to attract Pokemon? In the Gen 3 Safari Zone, what would be placed on feeders to attract Pokemon? Question 9. Name this Pokemon. Name this Pokemon. And question 10. In Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, what is the name of the city the Rocket Game Corner is located in? In Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, what is the name of the city the Rocket Game Corner is located in? 
And when you're ready, let's go into the answers. Question 1. What type of Pokemon is Palkia? It is water and dragon type. Question 2. When a Pokemon loses all of its PP, also known as power points, what move does it begin using? That is struggle. Question 3. In generation 1, how many Pokemon are ghost type? That is free. Question 4. Name this Pokemon. It is ditto. Question 5. True or false? There is a lighthouse in Sandwood City. That is false. Question 6. What type of Pokemon does the gym leader Price specialise in? It is the ice type. Question 7. What colour earrings are typically worn by the character Jesse in the anime? It is green. Question 8. In the Gen 3 Safari Zone, what would be placed on feeders to attract Pokemon? That is Pokeblocks. Question 9. Name this Pokemon? That is Clodsire. And question 10. In Pokemon Red, Blue and Yellow, what is the name of the city the Rocket Game Corner is located in? That is Celadon. And that is the quiz. See you in Pokedex entries. Welcome to Pokedex entries and today we're going to be looking at Paris. It's considered by many to be one of the weaker Pokemon in existence due to its bug and grass typing. But don't cross it in Legends Arceus! I'm curious to see what the Pokedex entries are for it, so let's take a look. Okay, this is very interesting. There's a lot to talk about here. So, um, obviously the mushrooms on the Paris' back, people, uh, well, it's known that they're parasitic. It's not a symbiotic relationship. The mushrooms draw most of the nutrients from the Paris, it says. But what I've learned here is, yeah, it is doused with mushroom spores when it is born. As its body grows, mushrooms sprout from its back. So, the second it is born, mushrooms are spored onto it. Which makes me think, oh, do the parents, like, the mushrooms make them spore onto the babies, which is really dark. But then there's also a contradiction. It says, this is Legend Arceus's dex entry. Sometimes seen at the foot of trees in humid forests. The mushrooms on its back, called, I'm going to try and pronounce this, it's Tochu Kaso. And I looked it up, and the first thing that came up was Paris, so... Are not present on infant specimens, and instead emerge as Paris matures. So, I guess the spores get sprinkled onto it as a baby, but then they don't emerge till later? Is that what it's trying to say? Or is this a contradiction? Uh, one of the uh, Pokedex entries says that the mushrooms are in control. Uh, ultra moons, it would be ultra moons, but no... This Pokedex entry is one of the funniest I've read in a long time, if ever. It says, The mushrooms, known as Tochukaso, are controlling the bug. Even if the bug bugs the mushrooms, they tell it to bug off. I think that is hilarious. Those are the Dex entries for Paris, and obviously I think I'm going to have to check out the Pokemon Handbook. Quite a big paragraph here. Parrot is a combo bug grass Pokemon. It has insect-like claws and rare mushrooms on its back. Its relationship with the mushrooms is an example of symbiosis. Well, that's not what the Pokedex entries on there kind of said. The mushroom-like pods take nutrients from their bug host. In return, the mushrooms shoot out clouds of stun spores to stun almost any opponent. When it isn't fighting, Paris burrows underground to suck tree roots. It's more or less what the Pokedex entry said, but... A lot of people say that the mushroom is parasitic. Maybe we'll see a bit more of that when we move on to Parasect, but that's for another video. One more Pokedex entry I didn't mention was uh, apparently the mushrooms can be used for medicines that extend lifespans. So that's uh, pretty good. I should have mentioned that earlier, but meh. Um, I think they established that in the anime. I'd have to watch that episode again. But anyway... Well, that's the end of episode 46 of Dudley's Poker Know How. Hope to see you all soon. Phone call.